I'm gonna do it. 6210R update. All right, so here's the story. There's, this is the story. These clutches, obviously, these are junk. They're junk, junk, junk. Uh, we're gonna re-clutch the entire transmission. That means these, those, and they're gonna pull this off of here, this guy here. That's the hydro, and then there's another set of clutch packs in the back, and they're gonna re-clutch those as well. So we're gonna have a completely re-clutched transmission. I am not going to be doing the work. Uh, there's a simple reason for that. Uh, they're thinking that at some point there was moisture that got into the transmission. And he says, just take your fingernail, he says, and uh, go ahead and scrape on that and see if something comes off. Well, things come off. Um, there's another thing that he was talking about, and I'll show you. It's right here. Um, I can't get up on there. But you see that cover right there? That cover has a whole bunch of uh, solenoids in it. Solenoids. Those are the solenoids that control the clutches in this tractor. Uh, he was really surprised, quite surprised. He says, hey, I'm really surprised, and that's the words he used, that this transmission let loose at this age. He says there's, there's a couple of things it could be. He said more than likely it was moisture at some point. Obviously, I do see some milky oil there, but there's no, there was no moisture, and that's just from condensation. But uh, he said moisture will cause this problem, he says, and there is a slight chance that one of the, the O-rings that were inside that plate that's in there, where the solenoids are, that that particular <coughs> part there, there's a leak, even though the pressure test came out correct. He says it could be that there's just a slight leak and they're slipping a little bit, which causes wear. And that was really kind of what I was thinking myself uh, as well. So they're gonna, because they work on these things on a daily basis, uh, they're gonna fit me in. I'm gonna take it out tomorrow and they're gonna get right onto this transmission. He told me, don't even bother putting it back together again. He says, just get it on the truck and bring it out the way it is so i'm going to get it on a couple of rubber tires put it in my pickup truck slide it all the way to the forward and i'm going to drive those this thing out to him tomorrow when i get back from the mushroom barn along with all these bits and pieces um and they're going to replace everything and it'll come back to me uh completely ready to slam into that tractor like a brand new transmission which is going to make me happy because
my god. Leslie. What was that? Shaft. Little baby shaft? Very expensive baby shaft. <laughs> little baby, all the baby are expensive. The smaller it is, the more money it is. It's like gold. Never so, seen such a thing. No. Right, <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you. I asked an Amish guy a few years ago. Why do you have? To, why do you have to do that? Steel. I know it has something to do with the church, but well, kind of the thing years ago when tractors came out in the automobile and right. the uh, when as stuff for guests, our leaders thought you know. We don't have a, we don't have either. We have a black right, And then that was, uh, you know, old tractors, some had optional steel, right? Optional tires. And they opted, you know, just to stay more conservative, you know, not have, then that's kind of what it's been People that had all the old had the tires. And, the steel. and now it's kind of still that way. Right. But keeps you going slow. As with Jesse Stoltz, he said, yeah, it, make, it maintains a slower pace of life. It does. That is I've seen some pretty ingenious rubber mounted <laughs> steel wheels. We have a 6 145R right, with steel on it. We can drive with 31 pounds. <laughs> Stopping might be a little fun. But this time of the year, you really got to watch. Yeah. You got to learn the pain with this cold. But yeah. uh, in the summertime, yeah, the yeah. building in between there is a flex. It is neat. I just got <laughs> it's cool. on and I had air boss tires on it. And I was glad to have like two of that because the tail on it was going to be a little bit of a Yeah, so I was glad to have that. It's not basically. I'll hold that up and stand it. Now you get the explanation. Yeah, that's cool. 
70R transmission in here, 7530, it's a lot of 7520s. So basically, we, we want to make a chassis yet yeah, that we can fold this and roll it away. They calibrate in a 20 series, they're going to calibrate in an R series. Right. A, a, a 20 series is one of the most thickening ones to calibrate. Yeah, that's what hmm. the Richard was saying. Exactly. You know, we had some that never calibrated and they're still going strong, but the forward reverse modulation is where I like to do the calibration, which your failure may. Did you ever do a calibration on yours? No. Nope. That is something that we like to do. Yes. As your clutch is where, right. you want to calibrate it so they uh, put it under load, you know, kind of fight against you and see where they're about fully engaged and they modulate off of that. So that, you will have to figure out the calibration. But it's very simple. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. You go in the command center on address 20 and it does everything by itself, more or less. So. Yeah. Well, I'll do that before, I'll do that before we go to work. Yeah. Yeah, and another thing I just learned, doing a calibration reset, it does like a new learn cycle. Because we had six R's come in here that we thought something was wrong because they were slow, the next one was aggressive. Right. And here, it does a learn cycle like an automatic transmission. If it has an aggressive driver, it'll adapt to that. Oh. And if it has a, a grandpa driver, it'll be just... Right. Yeah, I drive different than my father drives. Yeah. I had a kid that was working for us and he was baby in the family. Like, Dude, this really isn't designed the traffic to, and baby. It's. Yeah, it, it does. You know, it's forward, it's reverse. You really rarely even need to put your foot on that clutch. No. I think at one point John Deere was gonna take the clutches out. You know, right. the clutch pedals out. I don't honestly I just use the brake pedal. Yeah. I don't ever use the clutch. Yeah, I, the clutch is a and Something that was grandfathered in the yeah. tractor and yeah. it's still there. So. It's still there. But this we more or less like your transmission I probably won't test because I you know it's easy enough to know what the failure is, but when somebody sends one in from Canada that they got traded in and you know nothing. Right. You know, did it calibrate or yeah. yeah the 
but that's pretty ingenious still. <laughs> How long it take you to put this thing together? Uh, I think one guy worked about two weeks solid. To yeah. put. Stuff on a tractor through the wall. Because we had, it used to be set in the middle of the shop, then we built this addition, and then we have a dyno in the other corner there, so we don't have to winterize it. We can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right, winterizing the dyno. <laughs> I was gonna buy it. There was a dyno out for auction and it was dirt cheap, but it was ancient. I mean, it was, I don't think it was meant for anything over 150 horsepower. But this here is, we can run 800 feet to the horse through that. Can run. That's, that, I feel that's probably one of the knockiest strokes that I ever had. It got it off an insurance auction. It was, it was one year old. Oh. Hey, a John Deere dealer had a shop fire. And this was in another section of the fire. It was not damaged, but the insurance company wrote it off. Right. And I, uh, they actually had a six R at the same auction, a two ten, with that the cab was off right. in the shop, and it had two trans. The insurance sale had two IVTs on it, the bad one and the reman that was there to be put in, oh. and they sold the whole, uh, yeah. the whole kit to get boot. There you go. Now I was only I've only ever watched them dyno something once. Mm -hmm. That tractor was shaking. Man, it really draws them down. Yeah, you can, you can. Uh, we can kill like an eight, an eight R. Smokes. I couldn't believe what it was doing with that tractor. Um, well, I guess I watched a couple of them. One guy, he had a Farmall M that he had souped up to. Well, those things are, you know, it's antiques, but he was wanted to do tractor pulling with it. So he had this huge carburetor on there. He'd done something with the cam. He had filled in the block with sand mm -hmm. and did all this stuff. And then he took it over to the dyno and they broke it. <laughs> they broke the tractor. Oh, we, we broke a pulling tractor on here last summer. It was a 6615 that somebody put a big A pump on it. And yeah. I think that one had 500. And we blew the head gasket and melted the piston on the dyno. But Oops. And we kind of wanted to see where it goes, so he found out. Yeah. <laughs> was he upset or was like? No. Well, I think it was on the way out already. And right. It more or less finished it off. So. Yeah. yeah. It don't look like much of anything, but no, it's they they break. I don't know why, but that thing just went <laughs> up on one wheel and slammed back mm -hmm. down because everything came on at once. Yeah. And that was not good. That was a wind code generator. My yeah. Dad, my dad was like, we're not doing that again. <laughs> I can show you some of my parts in the inventory. Why I'll have an IDT. Uh, Ooh, look how big this ta- Ooh! All kinds of stuff. Getting off on the big track. Look how big that is. Nice. How big. Where that one come from? That one getting tough. Well, it's. Yeah, I bought you from Charmin. 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 Yeah, they, they're now a case I each dealer. Uh, yeah, they do still have. They have some green yeah, stuff. Yeah, not, not like they were dealing with. Yeah. Oh, it's 47530. That one we bought with a bad transmission, and that one's getting a nut and bolt restoration. Uh, I love my 7530. Oh, they're oh, nice. Them, they're <laughs> yeah, they're nice. This is, they're, like, they're this is what all your shift business mode one, mode right. two, three, and four. Wow. And that's all in that front. Yeah. Right? And this turret. Um, yeah, this one here stopped in the middle of a traffic circle. That was the last time it drove. Right? Oh, it wow. Sitting, sitting for about five years. Titan Italia. Italian there, yeah. Really? But is that that long? That whole shelf is all IDT. Planetaries, Planetaries and hydros over there. And yeah. Pretty cool. That one burned them? Yeah, it. that uh, guy wants us to fix it. He didn't have insurance on it. And uh, it's going down the road on a windy day, and a rat had built a nest on top of the engine. Oh. Oh. Lit her up. You said you had a 7410 burn up for you. Yeah, burned it up, and I didn't have insurance on the thing, and I should have had, well, you know what? It had 17, 18,000 hours on it. What's it worth? Yeah, we'll go replace the damn thing. That's yeah. what it was worth. It was more worth, it was worth more to you. It was worth more than, well, even to replace that yeah. stupid tractor. The cheapest one I can find is still in that forty-five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 range. I was like, do you still have your burnt one? Yep. 
I do. Why you want it? Well, if you ever want to sell it, we're I do. looking <laughs> for further yeah. steps. Uh, it is cooked, though. Cooked. It's cooked. I would have to bring it out here in Utah cooked. to say, well, yeah, what do you want? Yeah. Yeah, that. You know, something like that. I thought it three, four thousand. Wow. Parts. Wow. Yeah, I mean that's I, that one down there was not not the best deal. I had to drag it out of North Dakota, and I thought I bid low enough on it, and apparently not low enough, so I ended up paying four thousand and then trucking it for five years. Oh, <laughs> ouch! Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pulling them frame rails, I pulled a 6200 apart, and I tried to get those those the pullers to pull out of pins. Those pullers are kind of. I exciting. made it. I just made them up. Well, we have we have a a four foot slide hammer with big right. weights and just feed them out. Feed them out. Yeah. Usually we don't pull the pins because we just yank the power quad out the front. But right. this one we're doing a. Uh, that's a restoration. Idea. That's a power quad with 24 speed. And we put a high speed ring and pinion in the back. That tractor's going to go just about 45 mile an hour. Wow. And this, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, getting it going that fast is easy. It's the stopping. Yeah. That's what makes me nervous about them. It's yeah. the 45 miles an hour. Wow. Well, we sped hers. Well, we sped hers up. That was the 8530. Yeah. Put that up to 30. I think it goes 31 or 32. 31. Yeah. You did it He's longer. like, you want it to go faster? I'm like, no, I don't think I need to go faster than that. I'm a little bit cautious about that, but even this deal here, I like my front brakes. Right. Like that 7530 has the wide hubs with the front brakes, and that is pretty important. They put front brakes on that? Yeah, this here. Any 31 mile an hour tractor from the back to it has wet disc brakes in front. This is your brake line. Okay. That's got to be what my 62 10 R has in there. There's, there's lines that go to that's it. That's front brakes. That's front, that sucker will throw you through the window. Oh, I know. And that's what it's supposed to do. I just yeah. wonder if my, well, my 7530 is. Was a, that a 40K? Back it then? was, yeah. Yeah, so they don't have. No. When they're 40K, you have to special order them with front brakes. If you, But in a 50K, it was a stand. Yeah, no, I didn't do it. It doesn't have that. I know it doesn't have that. Yeah. So that's why I said to the boys, I'm like, there's got to be some kind of something up there. Yeah, and that is probably the only brakes that I have never touched yet of all the front brake trackers we put through here. Um, there's three, three little discs in here, wet disc brakes, and they uh, wow. just don't seem to give up. But you didn't really notice it when you hit the pedal from one that doesn't have it yes. to one that does. Yeah, well that was when I got on that, that 6210 R. I hit the brakes for the first time, I'm like, what the hell, this thing, this will throw you. Yeah, yeah. and it can, that's a, what I always look for is the lines going to the mm -hmm. so, And they're plumped right in with your foot brakes that when you apply the brakes, it put X amount of the world in the front right back. So, uh, now, I told my dad when, he, when I brought that thing home, I was like, look, when you put your foot on that brake, you're going to notice this thing's going to want to stop. Mm -hmm. And he, he didn't believe me yeah. until he put his foot on that brake. And he was like, what the heck? This is the best brakes on anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really worked. I love that. So. All right. Well, wow. got to go see if the boy is still sitting there. She's going to have to inventory all over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the big tractor over there in the... Oh, is this the one the plates from yeah, England? Plates. Yeah, well, these guys, they know right where these tractors come from, these Europeans or yeah. the English. They're like, oh, yeah, that came out of so and so. That's so -and -so. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, how do you know? Well, yeah, the. The letters the and the letters. Yes, that's letters. basically like a title on a vehicle, you know. Right. You guess and they have a cool. register, I don't know. And, and yeah. Charmin's had a little thing up in the front. you got to have registration. Yeah, there's little pouches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pull them out. But, <laughs> I know, I left it all in there. Yeah. I think it's cool. But. Yeah.